What's happening all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar with Astonishing Melanie. And today we're going to be doing an advanced overview of Spider-Man vs. Venom Omnibus. This is the latest printing from Marvel Comics, so please stay tuned. David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us this uh, reprint uh, so we could do a comparison. That's right. This book is due out in the direct market and book market on March 7th or 8th, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover. This is the one by Mark Bagley. And on the left is the standard cover by Todd McFarlane. And notice the difference in the spines. That's right. Sometimes... Lately, they've been doing a lot of different spines between the direct market and the standard edition. And this time around, yeah, we do have two different spines. Everything else on the inside, though, is identical. I really appreciate how you do have both choices um, because I love Mark Bagley. He's such an integral part of the, uh, the whole 90s. And you've got that bright cover there that is so reminiscent of 90s. However, Todd McFarlane is the Todd father. He, he's the... <laughs> The one part of the team that made Venom, so I can't ch choose between which covers is uh, the better option. So let's shift the focus back to the direct market cover, and actually what we'll do, since we are going to be doing a comparison, we're going to have the original printing here. This is the one from 2018, and it is the same cover that they're using now for the standard edition cover. There was only one cover choice back then. Hey, hey Omar, guess what? what? I did pick a cover. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because uh, Spider-Man's head just kind of stuck over there. Nope, nope. She, um, she's in McFarlane's cover. This is more of a maximum carnage kind of era, which yeah. is included in here. And we'll talk about what the contents are. But first, let's do a quick comparison. So this is the original printing and the new printing. The spines of the book. This one looking a little bit thicker than the new printing right here. So the font, picture of Venom down there, those are the same and the ISBN is smaller on the new printing. Yep. The team uh, rating in Marvel down there. $125, the same price that the original printing was. And these are the covers of the stories that you're going to find in here. So do you think that was just somebody's personal choice? Like why change the T rating Marvel, like making it all smaller, the ISBN smaller? Is it just somebody thought, oh, huh, it looks better. I think it's, it's the way. it's the actual trade dress now. ISBNs are smaller. Oh, okay. And that's it. Um, okay, now let's look underneath the dust jackets. Do, 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 do. Nice, Legend of Zelda. Okay, I love this image. This is an iconic image, and it is exactly the same on both. But let's take a closer look. The new printing... To me, it seems a tad bit darker. No, you're right. That is something I've noticed between newer printings and older printings. The newer printings seem to have a little bit more of a darker tone to their colors. Sometimes you can tell a lot more in some Omnis, but this time around, yeah, you can barely tell. You can definitely tell the image has been upscaled. It's a little bit bigger, or maybe the framing is a little off, like more of... Venom's arm is cut off there, but let's look. Wait, wait, wait. It kind of matched together. <laughs> I don't know, just because what? of the colors. No, it doesn't together. match at all. It matches here. <laughs> but I wanted to look at the back to see if the back was bigger. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it looks like the image is bigger in the oh, newer yeah, printing. Oh, yeah, because his hand is cut off. Mm -hmm. It's not well, you can You have more of the body in the original printing than you do here. The other thing I wanted to compare... This is the original printing from the Donley printer, and look at that eye. That, that's almost, um, <laughs> that's a, oh my that's, God. that is a T. Becky, look at her butt. What? Look at her eye. Is that where you're it's going? so No, big. I was just going to say, it looks like a, like a teepee. Wait, it's it all... Becky? Was that the yeah, line? I don't okay. remember some mix a lot song right now. I'm focusing on the freaking, I'm focusing on the spine, Melanie. Stay focused. All right, look. That's you almost a little a, too much. A hot dog. <laughs> Oh my god. Because you know I eat when I read with a bit of hot dog burger. Alright, let's see the spine. Oh. <laughs> and now the spine of the new printing. You can fit a taquito through. What is, we are not doing that. We're not fitting hot dogs through my freaking book spines, nor taquitos. No food is going through the spines. But we wanted to show you the difference in the spines. So this one, a lot smaller. And 
a different printer. This one printed at the Donnelly printer in 2018. This one printed at the iMac printer then 2022. Now, before we start looking at the inside of the book, one thing I wanted to show before we talk about minor spoilers is, is where it fits in your shelf. And this is where you put it if you have it with your Spider-Man books, because it is called Spider-Man vs. Venom. And I put it right after the Eric Larson, David Michelinie omnibus, and before the Spider-Man Clone Saga Volume 1. We still need stories collected in between there, but that's enough for another omnibus. Now, if you're a Venom collector... You could put it here before you're a Venomnibus Volume 1, because it basically is a Venomnibus Zero. It's where his creation story takes place. Wait, that was awkwardly worded. You want me to cut that out or Melanie, leave it in? I can't tell. Melanie talk pretty one day. Please don't start that. So we did want to showcase where these fit in your shelf. Or else. No. Or else we'll come after you. What? Put or you them can, where we say. But you can put them wherever you want to. If you want to mix <laughs> them in with trade. Yes, they can. If you want to mix them with trade paperbacks, that's completely fine. Now, I always thought it would be such a gimmicky move to make the direct market Ven Omnibus Volume Zero and the standard edition oh, or vice versa. Yeah. Spider-Man versus Venom. Like, like uh, but I think that would be a uh, difficult and it's not fair because not everybody can have access to the direct market. Overseas people are only limited to getting the standard edition. I don't know why I keep pointing it. This is the original version. All right, we're going to crack this open and again a reminder, minor spoilers. Let's jump in and then we'll do a comparison. I'll put the timestamps in the description of the video. All right, we're going to crack this open. We have some red wallpaper. and sheets there. Wallpaper. And you're being just as difficult as Alicia. I'm just have, <laughs> I'm gonna remind you. Here's a Venom right there by Eric Larson piece, and Spider-Man versus Venom. All the creators: Tom DeFalco, Louise Simonson, David Michelinie, Danny, Danny Fingeroth, Peter David. All the artists right here, including your inkers, the colorist, and the editors at the time, and of course, giving you a small glimpse as to where the origin of Venom first started. That's why we said. That this would be a Venomnibus Volume Zero, if you will. Um, notice how the framing is the same as in the original printing. That mm -hmm. you've got the the black around it. I've been creative with it. It's got like symbiote goo falling mm -hmm. down, but uh, there is that to mention. I do remember that in the original printing, like they had this. You're right. It's the symbiote goo. Um, but it looks like the frame is off. So that mm -hmm. worry not. That was in the original printing, and it's intentional. Because it could look like, oh no, the, they messed up the framing. And then want people to freak out over that. And we kick it off with Amazing Spider-Man 258. This is the issue that is fully collected in here. So, Astonishing Melanie, what does this book collect? Amazing Spider-Man 258, 300, 315 to 317, 332 to 333, 346 to 347, 361 to 363, 374, 378 to 380. Web of Spider-Man 1, 95 through 96, uh, 101 to 103, Avengers Death Trap the Vault 1. So that's what it feels like to hear me go through all these issues. That's awesome. It also contains one of the greatest 90s series, and that is what? Is that, that is right. What issues? Well, 13 to 14. Not yes, I love that fight. <laughs> I remember you did. I thought it was okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, Spider-Man, The Trial of Venom, one. Ghost Rider, Blaze, Spirits of Vengeance, five and six. I, I like that one. Spider-Man, 35 through 37. Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, 201 to 203. Material from Amazing Spider-Man, 373, 375, 388. Amazing Spider-Man Annual, 25 through 26. Web of Spider-Man Annual, seven through eight. Spectacular Spider-Man Annual, 12. Marvel Comics Presents, 117 to 122. Spider-Man Unlimited, one through two, Venom subplot pages. Look at you. By the way, I just want to go back to this. Oh my gosh, I've always loved that cover. It's one of my favorite covers. So do you put as much inflection and change the cadence of your voice when you read through it? Nope, I'm just like this collects Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 300. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sure I do. So these are the important issues that help build, I guess, the case of Eddie Brock, right? Like I said, we'll be talking about some minor spoilers. Nothing too big. Um, the one thing that I know this book is already 1160 pages, but the one thing I wish they had collected was the Sin Eater storyline because that kind of rolls right into oh, yeah, why does. Eddie does what yeah. he does. And again, not going into spoilers, but then we Just get... keeping in mind that Eddie was a journalist as well. 
yes, Eddie was a journalist and hates Parker. And that's what kind of makes the symbiote and him connect. So at the beginning here, you know, it's just Peter Parker with the symbiote, the new costume. He's like, oh, cool. It moves on its own. And then it gets darker. It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm having nightmares. And then it leaves his body because he rejects it and it moves into someone else. And that someone else is Eddie Brock making his first appearance, I guess, cameo appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 299, which, again, is not collected in whole, just like Amazing 298 with a little bit of cameo there. I will add in mm -hmm. that not just he rejected it, the bell, the sound. Oh, right. Made it come off. But yes, yes. I and luckily enough, someone else was there. So this introduces us to his biggest arch nemesis i think that's mary jane no not his mary jane. <laughs> just you opened it right when you said it mary jane I thought, lingerie is I his arch nemesis i really thought you were gonna make because, a joke you know, like always in oh lingerie. Jo joe casada because of one more day no 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 we're talking about venom uh and i know that everybody th thinks differently right the green goblins is the biggest arch nemesis craven the hunter uh but to me i think venom is just a great it character spider-man versus venom it, yeah well, right there is a Spider-Man vs. Goblin in trade paperback. Now, we're not going to flip through every page here, but just kind of highlighting some of this Todd McFarlane artwork because it does jump around. This showcases the appearance of Venom. For a story that's called Spider-Man vs. Venom, it really focuses more on Eddie Brock and Venom and the times that they show up. But then... Except the second half. Or right, the second half, the, get, it gets a little last, interesting. Last third, last third. Mm-hmm. Because it becomes really interesting. By now, you still have, like I said, Tom McFarlane. Uh, you do have in here, like, other writers were wanting to take an interest in the character of Venom. So Danny Fingeroff started writing the story called The Vault, where it showcases that, you know, the vault is the prison where all these people go, all these villains go, and Venom is part of this big riot. I love the twist ending here, so I'm going to skip here and go right into the Eric Larson era of venom now the story is as he told me he hated the idea of a costume come to life to be a villain so he made the character really goofy what? But like he like the, the costume the eyes and the, and the slobber and the tongue uh so he changes a little bit of the look of venom now i thought the most beautiful amalgam of both mcfarland and eric larson came later with mark bagley's artwork but yeah, he was he always uh he was not a fan of that. He wanted to make him goofy looking. Now that ends in a big storyline kind of cliffhanger that leads into the Dark Hawk story, but that shows up a little bit later. That's why I love those Dark Hawk issues because it was like, oh, it connects That's the best. Sorry to interrupt. This one. The best one. That's better than Dark Hawk one. What? The fight. The fight. Oh well, yeah, it's the fight. It's not fair. But the Dark Hawk issue is nice. And it's nice to have Darkhawk in a omnibus format and even though it's just a couple of issues and you're quickly introduced to portal and Darkhawk, but yes he gets to fight venom on an island and you can find out why venom is on this island and then we get the introduction of probably yeah by far my favorite spider-man villain and that is carnage my granny gave me these issues for christmas one year in middle school the issue 361 was my very first issue that I started getting a subscription to. Like before I would get the comic, uh, go to the comic book store and pick up issues of Spider-Man. But I guess it was just pure coincidence that I was like, you know, I like that Venom guy. I'm sure he'll be back. They mailed to you? Yeah, they mailed it to me. And I thought my copy was, was just a bad copy because the staples were like right here. And I was so upset. And I started trying to find another copy out there. But just... just to add to uh, what I said before, uh, I asked her for the money to buy those three issues. She didn't go pick it you out. Still had a cool, <laughs> you still had a cool granny. But this is the character of Cletus Cassidy who becomes the spawn of Venom. They shared a cell together and, well, through comic book science, he now has his own symbiote. So this is a oh, cool... A little bit of the costume got left. Yes, but he's leaving the costume everywhere, meaning everybody can have a piece of oh, Venom. Well, eh. Yeah, okay. Anyway, comic book science. I, I still love it. Uh, so there's this... People have to be crazy enough. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, there's this unwanted team up with Venom to fight against Carnage because he's such an evil opposing force. And the rest of the book is really about the 
almost like a redemption arc for Eddie. We have like the trial of Venom. The Spirits of Venom is so awesome. I love this story. It's got beautiful artwork too in here. This is the first time I remember seeing Adam Cooper really yeah. Hobgoblin. pop like out. Hobgoblin. Yeah, and it's just. Hobby. Please don't call him that. That's what Spider Man called him. Well, you're not Spider Man. Or am I? And then you have the Sam Wolverine. Keith story here uh, with I love Wolverine. The art. Oh, Sam Keith's artwork, man. I love his Venom. He did the variant cover for issue number three, which was just the tongue. It's ridiculous, but I'm like, oh, that cover's awesome. Yeah. It's a little much, it's a little much. But again, Sam Keith and Howard Mackey on this particular Marvel Comics Presents story. And we go back to this. Now, I can't talk too much about this or who those people are, but it leads into issue 375. Now, this isn't collected in full. It is just partially collected. It's the, pretty much the Venom stuff. But this leads directly into Venom Lethal Protector. This kind of changes... The character of Venom a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Ven Venom Lethal Protector is not collected in here. As Astonishing Melanie talked about what is collected in here earlier. That is in the mm -hmm. Venomibus Volume 1. Mm -hmm. But we still have more stories to collect in here. And for the first time ever, we have Maximum Carnage collected in oversized format. As a matter of fact, this is the only way to get Maximum Carnage in an oversized format. And for people that are like, I'll just wait for the David Michelinie omnibus to come out with Mark Bagley. I don't think the entirety of Maximum Carnage, and I don't even think the Amazing Spider-Man issues will be in there. Mainly because it's such a big story. What it's is got this? 14 parts. 14, yeah. Plus, I think they didn't have a prologue too. 14 issues, that's a lot to take in there. So, I don't think it'll be... I think this is the only way to get it in an oversized format. But this is a classic story where... Carnage just forms his own team, and he's like, let's go kick the crap out of everybody. He's bringing it to maximum effort. Yeah. Everything was maximum back then. It was the 90s. But this, I mean, this was huge. This led into a video game. I remember, like, the first time I ever saw a limited edition video game was Maximum Carnage. They had, like, a t-shirt, the red cartridge, which everybody got, but then it had, like, other things, including some comics. So it was marketed really well. And went on for 14 issues. And then you get a little bit of more Venom in later issues of Amazing Spider-Man. And it's just the backup stories. Uh, you get the actual concept art. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. It's a nice piece of artwork. You get some pinups in here. Eric Larson, Mark Bagley. A little bit of behind the scenes. So this is where we welcome everybody back that did not want any kind of spoilers. So... This is the back matter and extras we're looking at, including house ad pinups, covers for trade paperbacks. Wait, wait, wait. This looks like it reminds me of Goosebumps art. Where is it? R.L. Stein's like, Goosebumps? Yes, doesn't it? Look, that comes with a freak. Oh, and it says Chillers. chillers yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Marvel okay. Chillers, the saga of the alien costume, 1996. Venom was such a popular character. I don't think people, I don't know, maybe people realized it back then, but I remember as a kid... This trade this paperback. The, this is the first trade, correct? It's one of the early trades that oh, wasn't. First trade. It that wasn't, like you know, you, DC had like Batman Year One, no, had no, Watchmen, no, X Men had Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix oh, okay. was a trade paperback that they've been around forever and from the ashes. But I remember this, like immediately after the release of Venom in like 1988, this came out in early 90s, which was insane. 1990. Yeah, I, I, I well. There was a, yep, you're right. This is the 1998 printing of Spider Man vs. Venom. And again, just trade paperbacks or reprint covers. Got some Rom Lim artwork there. That's the cover to the trade paperback. That's on the video game, right? And the video game cover, correct. The cover to the Omnis, the recolored Omni. Boy, that was a big deal. I was going to say, that debacle. That debacle. Yay. Hey, they, they sent out the replacement ones. That was, whew. I think that was the last time they did that. <laughs> And second printings of Carnage's first appearance, because Carnage, everybody was after his first appearance. And I think to this day still, you still have those issues, don't you? I just told you. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yes, my granny bought them and I still have them. You, I was going to say, you left and that they out. Were, they were in, um, what are those hard plastic cases called? Ollie bags? I no, don't know what no, you're talking no, about. like a case. This and looks... hanging up. Like on the wall, I was like, oh, those are special, I well, want them. We'll do a comparison to the original printing. This looks a little bit muddled, and I don't know if that was the oh, original oh, scans. I had that one, that one. Oh, I've never seen that one. And, and I don't, that one. I don't know if it's the original scans, but 
by all means, Melanie, please keep that telling one. us which cards you had, because that's more important than the scans. Okay. Yeah, look how gross that one is. We good? <laughs> we good now? His lips like... Can we turn a... Pic that is creepy. <laughs> and then this one right here by Steve Lytle. It's an awesome piece. And the end paper. All right, let's look at the binding one more time in case people missed it at the beginning. 1160 pages. And again, this is a um, new printing with the eye that, well, now I don't think you could fit a small taquito in there. Please quit talking and about let me food. let clarify, with the original printing, that huge eye, when I said hot dog, I meant hot dog on a bun with fixing. Okay. That's what I was picturing. All right. So we're going to do a comparison to the original printing now. So we have the original printing here, the old printing, and the new printing. Hold it up. Uh, this yes, it's yeah. like lime green ribbon. That's the neonish. Ribbon. Yeah, I noticed that ribbon. when looking at the binding. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crack these open. I'm gonna try side by side. I usually do them on top. Uh, you have the same kind of we're end good? sheets. Mm -hmm. We're good. You can move this one actually a little bit here and this one here. There we go. That's a better shot. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room, and that is of course the paper. So. The paper here for the original printing is this thicker paper that the only printer was using back then. Uh, this is the iMac printer. And honestly, it feels thick. It's not obviously as thick as this one. Sure. It's not as thick as the Donnelly printer, but it feels thicker than the paper stock they've been using. Blind paper feeling. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that on the channel. Uh... It, you, you, maybe this is thicker? Is that oh, what you thought? Yeah, it is oh, thicker. Okay. Okay. So you can see more bleed through here on Venom's eye. Oh, and I suppose that shows as well. That's a tiny bit thicker. Right, you get a little bit here, but not as much as you do over there. I hope it's showing up on camera. Sometimes when I talk about these things and I'm editing, I'm like, ugh, it doesn't show up enough. But then if I make it too bright, you're losing the colors and everything else. And again, just some of the white. Get a little bit of font and the cover right there than you do over here. There's a little bit, don't get me wrong, but it shows up more over there. And the paper here. So maybe a little bit down there. There's some stuff. So let's, um, one of the big things I'll, I like to do is the way that the book lays over. So let's find, all right, we're looking at two spread pages on pages 646 and 647 from the Sam Keith and Howard Mackey story. And... I think it's just the way that this one is bound that you probably saw. It looks like a triangle. You do get a little bit of art that's lost there. And this one has more of a gutter curve. But I'm trying to see, hope it, the video shows exactly what I'm talking about. That you do get, even though it's bound a little weirder, you get a little more art here than you do here. Unless you hold it down like this. And that's because of the way that this one is bound. It doesn't have that big of an eye as much as this one does. Let's look at another page. And just to ease people's minds, in case they have the new printing and they think the framing is off, it was the same in the original printing. You have this symbiote kind of slime ooze coming down from the very top. And the rest of the cover is slid down. So it looks like it's cut off, like the frame is cut off. But that was in the original printing too. And just another example of the framing around the covers in the original printing and the new printing and we wanted to come back to here when i was talking about the new printing how this scan looked a little bit muddled rest assured it looks the same as the original this scan also looks a little bit muddled uh but honestly even the colors look the same so we're looking at another spread page this one here from the spirits of venom and the way that this lays over compared to the new printing again more of a gutter curve so you do get a little less art there than you do here. And that's mainly on the spread pages. But that's it. Melanie, astonishing Melanie, sorry. If you would please close that book. That, as they say, is... That. Thank you. If you're interested in purchasing this book, please check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! 
CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, build, and page count of this omnibus. And the comparison to the original printing. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Leave them down below. If you've read these stories, if you're going in completely blind, do you prefer Spider-Man or Venom? Which dust jacket do you prefer? Oh yeah, did you go for the direct market or the standard edition? Check out our Patreon. Great way to support the channel. The link is in the description down below. And thank you to our existing patrons for making videos like this possible. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. Hey, Minty!